Hey, this is Rene. Welcome to the uh, fifth part, I think, of the CCI programming tutorial for uh, Mistrader 5 in MQL5. In this video, we will have to take care of the next part of our schedule here, which is adding a break even stop. We already have a program that, that works pretty fine. We create um, positions if the CCI uh, thing, if the CCI. Um, Uh, indicator creates a, a signal and we have a moving average filter and we have a partial close everything's working fine but we need a um break even stop so what we do here is we have several ways of doing so but first of all we can for example add or maybe down here we can add a trigger for this so we can have a break even trigger points input which might be um, 50 and we can have a input in break even puffer points input which might be five what this does um, is i will show it in a second or i can explain it now first um, for example we have the in the, the the entry price of um, 100.100 so the trigger points and this is a by position by position and the trigger points mean that at 100 and 150 We want to trigger the break even, and then we want to move the SL to 100.105, so five puffer points above the entry price. So this is what we will do. So let's uh, jump into the on tick function, and there we have. Um, this loop already that we use for the partial close and this is great because we can just add some more things to this loop because if we want to process the partial close or the break even stop it doesn't really matter we always have to loop all the trades right so what we do here is we um, first of all calculate the position sl and the position tp maybe we start with the tp so we use the position get double function again because of course it is a um, Uh, uh, double value and we do the same for the position sl like this position get double position sl this is just another identifier that tells the position get double function what specific value we want to receive from the currently selected position and then here we have the piece of code that is um taking care of the partial close and now we add the piece of code that is taking care of the break even stop so we can check if um, yeah I think we can just say if position type is equal to position type by or if position type is equal to position type cell type cell like this so we um, add the code for the buy positions here so we can check if the bid price is above the position open price plus um, the break even trigger points multiplied with points or with the point value because in this case we know that the trigger is reached and now we calculate the new sl which will be position open price plus break even puffer points multiplied with point like this and then we check Oh, no, then we of course round this value so there are no issues with anything and then we can check if the SL is above the current position SL and in this case we want to modify the position using the trade position modify function and then we provide a ticket and a new SL which is the value stored inside of this SL variable and a old TP because we do not modify this and we can copy this print statement maybe and add it here so we know what the program did was um, uh, was saved at break even uh, I don't know because we want it so yeah some some text that will show you what the program do, uh, did and now we can copy this code for the cell case so we check if the ask price is below the position open price minus break even trigger points for the sa we subtract the break even puffer points from the open price we round it we check if the new sl is below the position sl and 
yeah, the rest stays the same. So this is it, super easy, super simple. We now have the break-even trigger points input here and we can check if this is working. And then we edit a um, break-even stop. And again, this is a piece of code that you can just copy and paste in pretty much any other program. So once you, you get down the basics, you can do anything. So here you can see uh, position two was, sa was saved at break even because we want it so and it happened once the program was 50 per, uh, points in profit so break even stop is there it is working and um, of course we still have the partial close which is also working so our program is getting a little bit more complex but i think these are all cool things that you can use for this and for other programs and again, if we have another position here, the same happens. We have the break even stop, we have the partial close, and it should also work for sale positions. If, if we see a sale position somewhere, uh, whoops. Yeah, this is the problem. You can only go complete uh, speed here, or you have this slow turtle, whatever mode. So this is a little bit hard to find the right trades. But yeah, I mean, uh, you can test it on your own PC and here you can see there was a break-even stop processed so it should work so this was the last trade this was position 55 so position 55 was saved at break-even and this was a sale trade so you can see it is working so again let me explain this real quick we added in this tutorial the break-even trigger and the puffer points here then we went inside of our on tick function where we already have this loop here, where we loop over all the open positions, we added these two lines since we need the old TP price and the old SL price for our calculations. Then we uh, checked if we have a buy position. In this case, we checked if the bid price was above the position open price plus the trigger points. And if this is true, we calculate the new SL, which is slightly above the um, position open price and then we check if this new SL is greater than the old SL and if this is true we use the position modify function which is part of the ctrade class which we can access using the trade object variable and we just modify this position and we have this really useful print statement which tells us what the program did and we do pretty much the same but a little bit different for the um, for the sale positions here. Yeah, and this is not interfering or this is not causing problems for the partial close function because they can operate completely separate from each other. And you could even um, have the same trigger points for the break even stop and the partial close. I think it should also work. So, this is it for this tutorial. And I think this was already the last video in the series or uh, when it comes to programming. So in the next video, we will maybe make some testing, but uh, for the programming part, this was it. So what we learned is how we can use the CCI indicator to receive trading signals. We added a moving average filter to filter some of these signals. And then we added a TP and a SL and a partial close and a break even stop. So a lot of things happening in this really small program with just 150 lines of code and maybe if you um, want to check the <laughs> program real quick if you copied everything correctly i can make this a little bit bigger and i can maybe uh, show everything um, slowly so make sure that you always set the semicolon that you do not forget it and that you get your bracket game right because these are the cases where you get most of the errors so I will show it to you slowly so you can check and compare to your own program. So you can check the on init, the on dnit, and the first part of the on tick. Yeah, just pause the video if you need more time. And then we will have a look at this first part of the on tick function again, especially at this loop. And here it is really important that you get your brackets right. And, and don't forget to move the code inside of the body of anything a little bit to the right. So it looks more structured and it is easier to read. So this is um, the break even stop 
part inside of the loop and this is the partial close part inside of the loop. Again, make sure that your brackets are placed correctly because this is a major um, struggle for many uh, beginning programmers. But um, yeah, just um, yeah, you will get the hang of it um, as soon as you write more and more code. And then as a last part, we will have this piece of code where we check if we have a new bar and then we calculate the trading signals here. Whoops. And um, this is for the buy side and this is for the sell side. And in the end, we just have the comment. You do not really need this. So this is it for this um, tutorial. Hope you liked it. Leave me a comment and um, make sure to subscribe for more content on MQL5 and MetaTrader 5 programming. Until next time, have a great time and good trades. Bye-bye.